you own a smart home and you love RGB lighting, so you're planning on installing more RGB lighting in your smart home, then I have a question for you. Have you ever heard of addressable LED strips? If you answered no, then welcome to the coolest technology in LED lighting. Because with addressable LED strips, you can now transform your old RGB lighting setup from something like this to something like this. Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, hello and welcome to the channel, and I hope you like today's video. If you like smart home and automotive technology content, then hit that subscribe button, because that's what you're going to see on this channel. In today's video, I'm going to start off by briefly discussing addressable LED strips, before getting to the main subject and my project for today, which is to update the LED strip that you can see here, I have around my office door frame. As you can see, I have attached a standard RGB LED strip to my door frame, and I get to light up in different colors as certain automations are executed. And while this works really well, and definitely catches my attention, it is also, in my opinion, now very outdated. And to be honest, kind of boring. With the technology available today, in my opinion, I could really improve on this. So in today's video, that's exactly what I'm going to do. At the moment, I'm controlling the LED strip around my office door frame with this a Zemi Smart RGB LED strip controller, which is also matter supported. This device works flawlessly, is very reliable, and I can highly recommend it. And the fact that it can be incorporated into a matter controlled smart home is pretty awesome because a standalone matter supported LED strip controller is definitely not a common smart device you can find, at least at the moment anyway. If you want to know more about this and see it in action, then you will find the review for it on this channel which I will put a link to at the end of this video for you. However, as good as this is, I could create much better lighting effects with it if it supported addressable LED strips, which it doesn't. So, welcome to today's main topic, addressable LED strips. Now generally, an addressable LED strip is an LED strip like this, where every single LED on the strip can be controlled individually. And how it does this is every single LED is controlled by its own individual electronic driver chip. The LEDs are all controlled over a single data line or dual data lines, which is completely different than RGB, which uses a separate data line for each color range. Addressable LED strips are also referred to as ARGB, the A of course standing for addressable. With an addressable LED strip, this means you are able to control the color, brightness and temperature of every single LED separately from all the other LEDs on the strip. Yes, this technology is unbelievably cool, and when compared to the functionality of the old RGB LED strips, the ARGB leaves them way behind when it comes to functionality. If you never have used addressable LED strips before, and you're still using RGB LED strips, then I pretty much guarantee after watching this video, you'll be upgrading to ARGB. And once done, you'll probably never look back again because you can do so much more with an addressable LED strip when compared to a standard 4-6 to six pin RGB LED strip. It does however all get a little bit more technical than this because there are many different types of addressable LED strips and instead of controlling every single LED individually, some addressable LED strips are designed to control a group of LEDs at the same time rather than individually. So instead of controlling one LED individually, it may be designed to control a group of maybe three or more LEDs together at the same time. So depending on what you want, it's very important to remember that. So yes, there are actually two different types of these addressable LED strips. Addressable and individually addressable. If you want to control every single LED individually and not in groups, then you need to buy an individually addressable LED strip, not an addressable LED strip like this one. The addressable LED strip topic can actually get really technical. And I'm not going to get that technical because I want to keep this video catered towards the beginner level. So as a beginner, what is the best type of addressable LED strip you should buy? Well, I would recommend something like this. The WS2811 addressable LED strip. I would recommend this LED strip because 1. It's probably one of the most commonly used addressable LED strips. And 2. It's also one of the most affordable. Yes, addressable LED strips can be very expensive due to the extra technology they use. The older RGB LED strips, such as this one here, are a lot cheaper. 
This WS2811 is a 12 volt controlled single line data communication addressable LED strip. This one is 5 meters long in length with a total of 120 LEDs. And the LEDs are controlled in groups of 3. That's right, the WS2811 is not an individually addressable LED strip. If you need to control every single LED individually and you're on a budget, then I would recommend you buy the WS2812 individually addressable LED strip. But for this video, I'm going to be using the WS2811 addressable LED strip, as I personally don't need to be able to control every single LED individually. Now to use an addressable LED strip, you would surely need some kind of controller device to control the LEDs, right? And yes, you do. And in today's video, I'm going to be using this one, which is the Athom LS2812B. This Athom LS2812B addressable LED strip controller is a 3-pin controller, and the three pins it uses are power, ground, and data. And when used with the WS2811 adjustable LED strip, it is just plug and play straight out of the box. There is no wiring to do at all. The only thing you will need is a power supply source. And speaking of power, it can be powered up from a 5 volt, 12 volt, or 24 volt power supply. And it's rated at a maximum load of 3 amps. It also uses the ESP32C3 chipset. It supports the WS2811. WS2812, as well as several other types of addressable LED strips. And it's a device that works really well, and it's reliable. The Athom LS2812B is a Wi-Fi controlled device. It uses GPIO communication protocol, and it's very easy to set up and use. It does also support Alexa, but unfortunately it does not support Google. If you have Home Assistant, however, you can get it to work with Google, but I personally don't, so in today's video, I will be solely using Alexa for all the automations you're going to see. There are of course a lot of other options to choose from when it comes to addressable LED strip controllers, but this Athom LS2812B is just what I personally have chosen to use for today's video. Now when using addressable LED strips, there is another common name that you may have already heard of, and that is WLED. When I say WLED, I'm referring to the software controlled app platform that you can use to control these addressable LED strips and do some unbelievably cool lighting effects that will leave you and anyone else completely speechless. And to do this, you simply just download the WLED app, connect it to your LED controller, and start creating some amazing lighting effects. However, to use the WLED app, your LED controller must also be programmed and set up to work with the WLED app. And another great thing about this Athom LS2812B is it is. So now I have an addressable LED strip, and my Athom LS2812B addressable LED strip controller, it's time to set up my new door lighting and then have some real fun with Alexa and automations. So let's get started. Okay, I have got my addressable LED strip mounted all the way up, over, and down my office door frame, and I've connected it to my Athom LS2812B LED controller, which I'm powering up off a 12 volt power supply, 12 volts DC, 2 amps which is actually the exact same power supply I was using with my Zemi Smart LED controller. I then just connected the Athom LS2812B to my Wi-Fi. I then downloaded the WLED app, opened the app, and det it detected my Athom LS2812B straight away. And it's now ready to use. Now to demonstrate this working, I have set up several automations for you. The only reason I'm going to be demonstrating multiple automations is so I can show you a good demonstration of some of the different LED effects that are pre-programmed in the WLED app. And by the way, for those of you wondering, yes, you can make your own customized LED effects as well and execute them through the WLED app, but that's a slightly more advanced topic, which I will not be covering in this video. But for those of you who are really interested in trying this, the easiest way is to probably just try editing an existing pre-programmed effect. However, the functionality can be slightly limited doing it that way. Or you could create your own effect using segments which is a feature of the WLED app, but that's a completely different topic as well. If you're an experienced programmer, that is another alternative, but obviously a lot more advanced. But anyway, in this video, apart from changing colors, I'm just going to be using the pre-programmed examples in WLED. So let's start with automation number one. Okay, to start off with, I'm going to use my Sonoff Smart Button again. So when I press the button once, the message lamp, which is what I call the lamp here on my wall, is going to turn on, and there's also going to be a special lighting effect around the door as well. So let's try that. 
The message lamp has been turned on. And now when I double click my turn off smart button, the message lamp will turn off and a different lighting effect will appear around the door. So let's try that. The message lamp has been turned off. Okay, now as some of you may already know, I also have a smart contact sensor mounted to my mailbox. So when someone opens up my mailbox and puts a package inside it, usually Alexa will tell me this, at the same time as turn on the message lamp on the wall to the color red, and this time of course it's also going to do a special effect around the door. So let's try that. Attention, your mailbox is open. This reminder will not be reset until you empty the mailbox. Thank you. For my next automation, I'm going to get Alexa to open up my smart door. And when she does that, at the same time, I'm going to have like a flashing rainbow LED style effect around the door frame. So let's give that a try and see what happens. Alexa, open door. Okay. Okay, and now when Alexa shuts the smart door again, I'm going to have a different LED effect around the door. So let's give that a try. Alexa, close door. Okay. Okay, and for one last automation. Again, some of you may already know that I also have a smart trash bin just down here, which Alexa can also open up for me. So this time when she opens it up, let's see what happens around the door frame. Alexa, open the trash bin. All right. Please put all of your trash in the bin and please do not forget to close the door. Okay, so hopefully at least one of those examples that you've now seen clearly shows you how an addressable LED strip like this WS2811 groups and operates three LEDs together all at the same time. It does not turn on each LED separately, unlike a WS2812 individually addressable LED strip would. If we take a closer look at this WS2811 addressable LED strip, we can even see why. See how there is only one LED driver chip spaced out along this LED strip after every three LEDs? So one, two, three, chip. One, two, three, chip. One, two, three, chip. That is another way you can identify the WS2811 over the WS2812. Now, of course, depending on where you purchase it from, a 5 meter long WS2811 addressable LED strip, like this one here, can cost you anything from approximately $15 to $20. I'm referring to New Zealand dollars, of course, as this is a New Zealand tech channel. If you decide to go for an individually addressable LED strip, such as the WS2812, you can expect to pay about double that price. These prices, of course, are only for at the time of this review. I'm sure it won't be long before these addressable LED strips will be able to be purchased for just a few dollars, just like the RGB LED strips are now. If after watching this video, and you're now keen to give ARGB a go for yourself, and you're wondering about the cost of this, the Atom LS2812B LED strip controller, the cost was approximately $25. But as I said earlier on in the video, there are a lot of other addressable LED strip drivers you can choose from. It does not have to be this one. However, this one does work well, so it's definitely a device worth considering, if it's going to suit your application, of course. Just remember though that you will require a power supply to power it up, which is sold separately. But it is available from virtually anywhere online. And the WLED app is of course free, and can be downloaded from the Google Play Store. I haven't personally tested it, but apparently it is also compatible with iOS as well. Anyway guys, that brings us to the end of another video, and that was my short introduction to addressable LED strips. I don't do a lot of videos like this, but I thought I would give it a try just to see how many of you like it. I'm sure you will agree that the lighting effects you can achieve with addressable LED strips are on a completely different level to your standard RGB LED strips. They are really cool and a lot of fun to play with, and I'm glad I've made the upgrade from RGB to ARGB. 
And what you're looking at here right now is just a very simple custom design I just quickly put together using the segments feature in the WADD app. When you get used to designing your own lighting effects, there's pretty much nothing you won't be able to make. For anyone who wants them, I will of course leave links below to where I purchased everything in this video from if you want to use the exact same products as me. If you feel confused about anything I have mentioned in this video, then feel free to ask it away in the comment section below and I can try to help you out. If you also enjoyed the video or found it helpful, then please like, share and subscribe to the channel where you can watch even more videos, which I upload every week, and I hope to see you all in the next video.